Hello Internet and welcome back to Mark Attempts Tech Reviews. Today we are looking at the Blaze Vibe 6 smartwatch for running that came in this sleek box sent by Banggood. So yeah, I'd like to thank Banggood again for sending me this product, I appreciate it. They have no say in the review of this video, so they're not paying me to be like, hey, say something good about this, but they did send me the watch as a gift to review. And of course, thank you for clicking on the video, make sure you turn that subscribe button from red to gray if you haven't already. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Going back in time real quick to about two weeks ago when I first got the watch, let's cut to the unboxing. All right, unboxing the Vibe 6 as if I'm a professional. The box is pretty, is really sturdy. It's an issue with the packaging is why this is ripped. There was tape on here that was taping what it came with together. If you're curious on what it came with, you can check out the video I made about the drone. Super nice box of just sliding it out. I really like this. Generic instructions on the back, you know, generic smartwatch stuff for the box itself. Comes off nice and smoothly. Ooh. So in case you didn't know, there's a whole thing of unboxing and how boxes are designed. And I like this a lot. You've got the watch right here. I was sent the blue one, just pluck it out. Nice and smooth, no issues, no risk of breaking things. Protective film, please read the manual. I will, I promise, as we put this to the side. All right, nice and foamy. We've got, I assume, charging cable and other peripherals here. Does this use a micro USB? I was gonna say, is there nothing inside? It is a special charging cable, no micro USB, so that's pretty awesome. I like that a lot. Looks like it'll sit. So then when you charge the watch, we'll get into all of that stuff later, but you just kind of magnetize, attach it here. Sweet. And then watch goes on. Very comfortable strap. Don't see that being an issue. It's a little bulky, I think, first impressions. I could get used to it. I'm not usually a, a big watch kind of person. Compare with my sister's Fitbit Blaze, it looks like this. There is no buttons on the left, two buttons on the right. Oh, power button. And it's good to go, pretty much. Nice. Oh, it's touchscreen. Don't know how I feel about that, but we'll talk about that a little later. Nonetheless, I'll go ahead and pair it with my phone and get back to you. All in all, there were some hiccups, but on the Banggood page, there are eight general big selling points of the watch on the Banggood page, and you can find the link in the description down below. So I'm gonna essentially talk about those claims and my experience with the watch. I've been wearing it nonstop for the past two weeks, and I've got a pretty good feel for it. Kicking it off with battery life, this watch is definitely the best battery life of the three smart watches I've ever worn. It's currently on two out of four bars, and I haven't charged it in about 10 days. And I've had it on consistently, so that should say something. The watch itself itself is decently big, but I got used to it real quick and I really don't pay attention to it anymore. But that sacrifice for size does pay off in the form of a very long, long battery life, as well as a touchscreen on the watch. And that touchscreen display is super clear, as you can see in some footage coming up in just a minute. Now, one of the claims on the site is that the watch is water resistant. I mean, I don't really know what watches aren't water resistant these days, but Keep in mind with the touchscreen, and this happened on my Fitbit too when I used it, the water will kind of influence it and like touch stuff and tap stuff. So like I don't wear it in the shower, for example. I don't really want to get out after like five minutes and then my watch is like, ah, oh, you've been running for three and a half minutes. I'm like, no way, what? So speaking of running, I have used this watch on a few runs, but I didn't record those because it was really early on and now there's two feet of snow outside. So let's quickly cut to me going over the sports modes um, as well as music and, and the general settings of the watch. All right, so focusing in on the watch, if you slide up, you get access to the music. Really straightforward, the connection to Bluetooth is super, super simple. I had to disable the Bluetooth on my phone because my earbuds don't actually uh, connect the two things at once, but you literally just click an earphone, it'll search. So there's sound core, I can connect to them right now. Super seamless. One thing that's super great about having a touch screen is that you don't need to remember all these different buttons, but can just go between the screens by swiping. So you have the blood pressure, heart rate, your sleep, which, you know, might be measured in multiple phases like I did, shows your steps, which is kind of nice, and it goes back to the main screen. The top right is just the simple power button, and the bottom right is mode, and you have all the options that you could possibly need here. In terms of segueing here, we're gonna check out Sport. You choose from any of their presets. It's pretty straightforward. The only one I've ever used is Outdoor Run, so you tap on that, and it immediately starts, and it will actively measure your heart rate, so you can see the green light indicator there. You just tap this button once, and you get back to it, Swipe left, pause and stop, I believe swipe right does the same thing. No data, right, because I'm not wearing it. Now, when it comes to the app, and we'll get more into the app later. All right, so we're going back to January 26th here. It'll show the day from top to bottom, which is a little weird. You can probably reverse it somehow with the filters, but I'm not entirely certain. But we're going to go up, 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 and you can see 637 is when I got up. Probably was doing nothing from 7 to 730. And then I went on my run between 8 and 9, it looks like. The stats aren't too in-depth, so it's all up to you. And again, I'll go over this more later, but it looks like the heart 
heart rate isn't constant. But when you have it in sports mode, I do believe it is. And these are where the icons show up. So when you're just standing, it's sedentary or when, you know, when you're moving around. Yeah, so eight to nine on January 27th, you can see I was running, I guess, 124. 87 should be higher, but yeah, it's it's a nice looking app. And again, I'll go over more of it <laughs> a little later and uh, the downfalls of it. Now, when it comes to the music, you have to actually plug it into your laptop via USB and then uh, upload the MP3 file. So if you have iTunes or can download music that way, you're good, but it won't connect to a Spotify account or anything. Uh, and this is what it sounds like. It's a random Andy Grammer song because I had to quote unquote find something. And again, it, you know, it doesn't sound that bad, but I would not recommend taking calls through it. And we're back. The Bluetooth connection really is seamless with both your phone and uh, earbuds in my experience. I had no problems with it. I am a bit bummed about the music thing because you can't connect your Spotify account to it or anything like you can with a Garmin music running watch. So you have to download manual MP3 files. I personally love running without my phone. So this is one of my favorite features that, you know, the Fitbit Blaze doesn't have, for example. And to do that, you use the USB charging cord that it comes with, super straightforward process. And the music is super easy to access from the watch itself. You don't have to go to the app and download from there and stuff. When it comes to calling, as you just saw with the audio quality of the music, that's what the call might sound like. Calling audio is always just lower quality than general and also the mic is pretty testy. I did try on accident. My watch was connected as the Bluetooth audio device for my phone and the other person couldn't hear me that well. I could have been muffling the mic. It looks like it's right on the inside of the watch. In a pinch, if you really need to call someone, but it's a watch. Nothing exceptional. And honestly, the music coming out of the watch sounds like it would be coming out of a phone, which I guess is saying a lot for a watch, but in general, it's kind of like, do they really need to put speakers on a smartwatch? Now for the heart rate and the measurement stuff, for the first week or so of having the watch, I was really confused because on the bottom of every smartwatch I've ever used, I tried Whoop for a little while, but I returned that. I've tried Fitbit Blaze because my sister gave it to me when she broke it. There's always a green light constantly flashing on the back. And as you can see here, it's not flashing. Now it says constant heart rate monitoring, but for a little while, it wasn't measuring my heart rate at all. I would switch to the heart rate screen and it wouldn't show anything. I have two guesses as to what's happening. One, it's just not working, but I don't think that's the case because you're making a smartwatch, like that's the one thing that would work. What I do believe is happening though is that they don't actually constantly measure and just take a measurement every 15 minutes or so. Based on the timing in the app, that would be a pretty good guess. They just take a measure every half hour or so. Or when you're running, for example, it might then turn it on constantly. It was just something I really noticed within the first week, but this second week has been, it's worked and I guess the, the only thing that changed was when I charged the watch to full battery. Again, I haven't charged it since then, but perhaps it just needed more juice or something. I just genuinely don't remember if it was my bias towards it or if it was generally not functioning. Now, there's the app. So then there's the app. It's called H-Band and it looks really similar to Fitbit. There's nothing really special about it, but it is really easy to navigate and everything you need is there. One thing that I came to terms with a while ago is that when you buy a Garmin or a Fitbit, it's the same as when you buy an iPhone. You are buying part of the brand, right? If you're looking for a watch for really intense running or intense exercise or really intense metrics, when you buy a $300 Garmin watch, you are looking for those statistics. You're looking for the time they put into that software because the apps are free. It's the hardware that you pay for. In my opinion, most of what you're paying for is access to the app because you can't use the app without the thing that sends the metrics. That being said, at a less expensive price, the Zablaze H-Band app is much less detailed than say Fitbit. It's a pretty sleek and plain looking app, but you know, there's no forums page. There's no build your own running plan thing. But all in all, for someone like me, who's really minimalistic, this is exactly what I would use the Fitbit app for. Looking at my history data, for example, it's just some nice charge and how it's been looking over time. Average 73, which is a little high, I'm a little worried about that. Average sleep, eight hours, wonderful. That's how many steps I've taken today. Seven hours, I guess, is how long I've been awake, which is a little off. Sleep from 11.40 to 6.45 a.m., sounds about right. Uh, steps that I've taken today, 159. This is what I've noticed. I'm at 527 steps right now, and this is what I mean when I the, the measuring felt off. There were days when I've taken thousands of steps, and it was like, you've taken 200 steps today, and I'm like, ah, ah, ah. So 
that's still a little bit off, and I'm really not sure what's happening with that. Uh, but heart rate measuring is fine, blood pressure is fine. There's a module manager here, and you know, there's no other things in sports, sleep, heart rate, and blood pressure. And that's what I mean when you know you get what you're paying for, and that is not all the features that someone like Fitbit or Garmin might have. I would also recommend going in and saying, just tweaking these settings a bit so what you get notifications for. You have to make the alarms in the app. Make sure you turn your sensitivity up for a while. I was like, eh, to get it to turn on before I discovered this feature. And yeah, there are just other general features here. And then you can change what the watch looks like. It comes with four appearances. Uh, and they look to be themed in the color of the possible straps you can get. So I have the blue one, the green one looks pretty cool. This is my favorite watch face of the four. Go to running and it will show you all of your past runs. And I believe this will show you all the different sports. So on the left, it's it's got outdoor run, but you know, if you chose indoor run or hike or something, it would also show that. Most of my runs, I simply just am not used to using a watch in general. So I would forget to turn it on. But really quickly, you can see here for 10 minutes, nearly 11 minutes, it says I took zero steps during that run. I don't remember what that run was, but clearly something was off when I first got the watch, but it's been functioning regularly since. All in all, it's just a fairly generic looking app and it shows you what you need to know. So that's the general tech review of the watch, but now I'm going to get into my daily usage and what it feels like to use the watch and have the watch. So in terms of everyday use, you know, it's a much bigger watch, but I got used to it really, really quickly. It's nothing intrusive and I sleep fine with it on. Unless you've like turned the watch on and the brightness is all max, you're like, ah, don't do that and you're fine. The blood pressure and heart heart rate, like little widgets on the watch itself are kind of cool. And so I'll, you know, sometimes go and hit, okay, measure my heart rate or measure my blood pressure because why not? I have no idea how these things do it with the green light on the top of your wrist. I have a vague idea, but I don't fully understand it, but it gives me the same kind of data that the Fitbit Blaze does. So nothing wrong there. When I need to use the countdown feature, so, you know, I'm making food and I need to set a timer for the oven. I, you know, go into modes, go to countdown, hit start. The only problem for me is that when I flip the watch back over, it's back at the home screen and I have to go back to count down to see how much time is left as opposed to the time remaining showing up directly on the watch. And for alarms, you have to set them up in the app itself. Not the end of the world, alarms are pretty constant. I just found that one night I was like, oh, let me set an alarm for tomorrow to see how the watch does. And then I realized I had to go get my phone and I was like, eh, I'll set it up tomorrow. Lastly, in terms of notifications, the display is really clear so you can read text messages or whatever that come up. Personally, I don't like having a notification device on my wrist at all times. So I have the watch in do not disturb mode almost always. Now when it is in do not disturb, it'll still light up and show the message. So sometimes that will catch my eye, but if it's not in do not disturb, it'll vibrate for like an unsettling long amount of time. It's not like a full second, but it's like a, a 0.1 second longer than you'd expect it to. I got used to it really quickly, but every time I turn do not disturb off, it like gets me again. So in terms of all around thoughts, I think the watch is exactly what you pay for. The app itself is nothing super special and the watch measures your bio metrics on a fairly consistent basis. It's not constant, but it is consistent enough to give you an idea of where you're heading. If you're going on a run or you're going hiking or different sports modes, you can easily log those in the app. From what I tell, they're no different from each other. It's just that they label differently when they go to the app. And I personally believe that's how they all work. If you're looking for a watch that is in-depth statistics on your mileage, your kilometers, how intense you've been running, a watch that'll give you a training regime, you know, sprint for this minute. Okay, stop, go, stop, go. This is not the watch you're gonna want. If you're like me and you're pretty minimalistic, you just want a cheap watch that'll just show you some basic biometrics, this is a good bet. All in all, when you're paying a lower price for this kind of watch, as compared to Fitbit or Garmin, it's not that you're getting a lower quality hardware. I actually think you're getting a higher quality hardware in many ways. It's that you're getting a lower quality software. Shows you what you might need to know though. Nothing too intense and great for just a general overview. Anyway, that's that. If you liked the review, don't forget to hit like down below, comment with your thoughts, let me know what you think. And if you haven't already and you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe down below for notifications for future videos, as well as checking out my other content. I have a few other tech reviews. I have mostly typing in productivity videos though, and a cool video on language learning apps coming soon. If you're like me and you want a smartwatch that just gives you a generic overview and you don't need anything in depth, or you like what I've said about the watch because it's cheaper than other watches out there, you can find the link to the Ziblaze Vibe 6 on banggood.com in the description down below and in the top comment. But without further ado, thanks again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.